in the bid queue for FI20 earning conference call. As a reminder, all participants will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Singhal. Thank you and over to you, sir. A very good afternoon to all of you and thank you for joining us today for Solara Active Pharma Sciences Earnings Conference Call for the fourth quarter and full year ended financial year 2020. Today we have with us Mr. Jitesh Devendra, Solara's Managing Director, Mr. Bharat Sisha, CEO and Mr. Hari Aran, the CFO to share the highlights of the business and the financials for the quarter. I hope you have gone through our results release and the quarterly investor presentation which have been uploaded on our website as well as the stock exchange website. The transcript for this call will be available in a week's time on the company's website. Please note that today's discussion will be forward looking in nature and must be viewed in relation to the risk pertaining to our business. After the end of this call, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the investor relations team. I now hand over the call to Jitesh to make the opening remarks. Over to you, Jitesh. Thanks, Abhishek. Hi, friends. We welcome you all to Solara's quarter for FY20 and full year FY20 earnings call. I hope you all are fine and in good health at your respective locations along with your families. As you all know, our world has changed over the last few months and the pandemic has impacted our community, our work and rather our way of living. While all of this is difficult, unanticipated and unprecedented, it is also the time for us to look forward to a new normal we have entered into and to remain highly hopeful that the world will once again thrive for all of us to do what we aspire for. Today, joining on the call along with Abhishek and me are Hari Aran, CFO and Bharat Sesha, CEO of the company. I believe you have the copy of the results and hence in the interest of the time, I would like to spend a few minutes on critical factors that are attributed to the results that were reported today. Going back to the quarter, the Q4 FI20, during the first three quarters, we witnessed quarter on quarter growth on our, in our EBITDA and we were tracking at 820 million from Q3. Suspension of production across our sites, as well as logistics issues, both for RM and finished goods, led to lower sales in Q4 compared to Q3. Second, we stopped manufacturing and distribution of ranitidine as US FDA has determined that the NDMA impurity in some formulations products increases over time when stored at higher temperatures. Ranitidine constitutes approximately 7% of our overall revenue. The process is on to find alternate products which can effectively utilize the capacity. On our revenue front, we could have done better. One of the main reasons was due to the customer ordering pattern of one of our top 10 APIs, as well as delay in the ordering of validation quantities of our new products. As we speak, we are happy to share that the customer has started placing orders for the API and we will see a positive outcome in second half of FI21. Coming to our new products, we have completed product development for 10 APIs up to December 2019, but we only filed four out of these. We have learned that just by completing the development lab does not necessarily mean we can go ahead with filing. There are genuine issues like the time it took to finalization of the specs with the customer, obtaining the necessary license for products not registered in India, and in the last quarter, delay in receipt of raw materials which led to a lower number of filings. With the lessons learned, we are confident of increasing the number of filings in FY21. Our efforts to continue expanding markets for of our APIs has led to adding nine new markets. We believe such efforts will contribute to revenue growth while it aids in de-risk dependence on customer and markets we today operate. Despite the challenges, we are pleased to inform the growth of our beta, thereby resulting in a higher PAT compared to FI19. This has resulted mainly due to our focus on continuous improvement program. With a strong foundation built over the last two years, our focus for FI21 is accelerating growth through revenue expansion by way of commissioning our new facility in Vizac, building our cramps business, expanding our APIs to new markets, new customers, and ramp up our new product filing. As guided before, while we are well ahead of our three-year guidance on EBITDA and growth, we remain confident that we'll achieve the 15% CAGR on revenue. I would now request Bharat 
to share his thoughts on the performance and as to what he thinks would be the key focus areas for financial year FY21. On to you, Bharat. Thank you very much, uh, Jitesh, and good afternoon to everyone. I hope all of you are keeping safe and healthy, and I hope you remain, remain that way uh, in the coming days and weeks. I want to build uh, on what Jitesh has already shared about. I would like to re-emphasize that our commitment to employee safety and customers has been unwavering. We took and continue to take all actions to secure a healthy environment for our employees and towards being a reliable partner for all our customers. In 2021, we will be focusing on four themes of customer centricity, new products and new markets, continuous improvement, and of course, engaged employees. Each of these themes will provide us with critical levers to deliver growth for Solara. We believe that the full year 21 and in the future, a few macro developments will further enable our growth and enable our growth levers to succeed. And these include Pharma companies looking to diversify their supply chains. Some of the policy efforts by the government of India to promote domestic API manufacturing and an increased focus on healthcare by various countries. Solara is well positioned to benefit from these trends as explained above. We stay very optimistic about the future and our capability to deliver on our midterm commitments. Thank you very much. And now we're open for Q&A. Abhishek, over to you. Janice, can you please uh, open it for Q&A? Sure. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue is sending. We take the first question from the line of Subrata Sarkar from Mount Infra Finance. Please so. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Sir, uh, can you just explain like uh, a little bit in details like what is the particular reason for this quarter degrowth in sales and like uh, how many days has we actually missed out in this quarter? Uh, uh, due to this COVID issue, and what is the current state uh, of our plants? Sir? How, at what level are we operating or not, and at what level we are operating? Sir? Yeah, thanks. Uh, this is Jitesh. Sir. So yes, uh, the quarter four has been uh, challenging. Well, we had a strong order book. Uh, the suspension in our productions uh, because of the COVID, we had to go in for a, a complete lockdown, thereby. Uh, it did affect our uh, revenues um, and our EBITDA. And also on uh, the ranitidine, I would like to highlight, um, I know this would be a question. Uh, we have taken full provisions in terms of uh, the ranitidine impact, what it could have in the Q4 itself. So we don't see any negative impact of ranitidine in this financial year. Uh, going to your uh, next question about our current state of operations, we have uh, started in a phase-wise manner across all our locations uh, following all the uh, regulations posted by the authorities. Okay, sir, my question is like, how many days we have missed uh, because of COVID? Uh, if you just help us to understand, and like, what is the current status of the plant sir, right now? I already mentioned about the current status of the plant. As I mentioned in my last investor call, we were tracking well uh, at the last uh, quarter, that is the Q3 EBITDA of uh, INR uh, 80 crores. So we were tracking well, uh, and we, we would have expected to uh, hit that as a minimum number in Q4. But due to the issues uh, which I've already explained, and hence the lower number uh, in the Q4 EBITDA. Okay. And sir, uh, regarding you, uh, our, uh, this quarter, uh, this year guidance of like despite energy uh, like going off, uh, uh, which is almost 7% of our uh, top line, we are guiding for almost 15% growth in uh, sales. So sir, any specific reason and like, uh, uh, like is this the year where we are expecting a big traction on our contract manufacturing uh, area also, sir? 
Yeah. So when we guided the market and uh, on a three-year basis, we would uh, on a on the revenue front we would grow at 15% and on a bit of front at 20%. We are still confident about the guidance what we have given earlier, and we maintain that guidance. And um, as um, I told in my opening speech, we have now commissioned our Isaac facility also, um, and there is an improvement in terms of some of our key APIs uh, in, in the order book. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants, if you wish to ask a question, please press star, then one on your touchstone telephone. We take the next question from the line of Ashwini Agarwal from Ashmore. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, Jitesh uh, and uh, the team. And uh, for the update, obviously a challenging quarter. Uh, just speaking a little bit on ranitidine, uh, in the opening remarks, you mentioned that there should be no impact from ranitidine uh, going ahead. So did you see any product returns or any uh, finished goods at your end? Because from what I recall, the latest USFTA guidance in the first week of April, I don't think it happened in the Jan to March quarter. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, it didn't, uh, Ashwini, and uh, we are continuing uh, in discussions with our customers. Of course, you know, Stride is the largest customer. But um, even though it happened, it was at the end of the quarter, uh, from a good governance perspective, we have made uh, provisions in the Q4 itself uh, for ranitidine. So these provisions would be by way of writing down some inventories and finished goods or making provisions for uh, return what what what, what is the nature of these provisions these provisions are mainly as we in hari here yeah only hari. for inventory inventory what we are carrying which go, which the dispatches are held up only for that and you know I after mean, the, all the products are sold and you know there is no return by any of the customers are you liable for any returns? I don't know how your contract term. No, not for the returns. What Hari is mentioning is yeah. the provisions have been made for the inventory what is lying with us. Yeah. Correct, correct. No, the question I'm asking is that uh, your contracts with customers, once a sale is done, it's full and final. There is no potential of return, correct? Is that how I should understand yeah. it? As far as the API is meeting the specification, there is no issue of return. Okay. Okay, and would you be able to spell out what is the provision you have made with regard to inventory in the fourth quarter? So, because, you know, we are looking at an EBITDA number, uh, so that obviously has two components. One is one week of complete shutdown due to COVID-19 or whatever, eight days of complete shutdown due to COVID-19. Uh, and the other is because of these anitidine provisions, which would be, I'm assuming, one-off in nature. So, could, would you... Uh, Call out that number, please. Uh, we, we won't be able to give you a break up, uh, Ashwini, but I, uh, the, I'm, I, when I say I will talk on behalf of uh, Bharat and Ari, we were very confident about the Q4 number being in line with the Q3 or probably even higher. We were tracking at that rate. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just trying to break up what is the loss in EBITDA due to production and what is this specific in production, uh, in provision. Um, anyhow, let's move on from there. So second question is that you mentioned in your presentation and I just had like a minute or two to go through it uh, because it just came out, uh, is that you started production at Vizag. So what's the next uh, uh, sort of milestone there? Uh, are you going to file DMS and then you will see a US FDA inspection and you know you've also written that you file two DMS are they from Vizag or are they from your existing US FDA approved plant? Yeah. They are from the existing US FDA inspected plant. In Vizag the next step is of course the regulatory approvals. Uh, and uh, what we are doing is uh, both the two strategies. One is of course an approved DMF which is already with us. We would qualify the plant because that way it will trigger the inspection uh, because a new DMF goes through his own cycle of review and uh, then the approval. But the quickest way of doing it is an approved DMF. We would uh, add WISAG as an additional site. Uh, so it triggers the inspection by the European and the US FDA authorities. 
and uh, i mean assuming that the lockdown is lifted by june end would it be reasonable to expect that this inspection gets done by september end uh no that would be too uh, early to say uh, uh Ashwini, okay. but uh, definitely the European authorities uh, would be much quicker uh, compared to the US FDA, and uh, uh, we are hoping uh, that there would be sales from uh, the WISAC in the second half of uh, this financial year. Okay, uh, because so we have other markets yeah. also where uh, there is no regulatory approval required. It is more about GMP and submitting, which is for a quicker approval we can access those markets. Ah, uh, which is what my follow-up question is going to be. That in the meanwhile, do you plan to operate the plant and supply to other markets? Yes. Okay. What's the gross block uh, uh, at uh, Visag, uh, which has been added? Around two hundred crores. About two hundred crores. And in light of you know what's going on um, and you probably will continue to operate at subdued capacity utilization over april and may um i mean uh, would you uh, would you say that uh, there uh, the, the first quarter is likely to continue to be a weak quarter would that be a reasonable assumption to work with uh Yes, Ashwini, because um, you know the production also at our various sites, as I mentioned before, is uh, doing it in a phase-wise manner. Um, and uh, um, I, I would like to reiterate to give the conference that we have a strong order book, and it is more about uh, execution from operation, and to ensure that the safety of the employees, uh, you know, we have to do it in a very gradual and a phase-wise manner. Uh, as of now, uh, touch wood, there's been no incident in our any of our facilities with all the safety measures what we have uh, implemented. Where are you facing the bottlenecks? Is it employees? Is it shipping? Is it raw materials? Uh, where are the key bottlenecks? It's a combination of all, uh, Ashwini. And uh, given that we operate in uh, multiple states, the ground realities, uh, uh, you know, are different than what it is. Uh, uh, mention out there that the pharma is an essential thing, but uh, uh, every state has its own challenge. But uh, it's good to say that over the last uh, one week, at least it is eased out. You know, we are getting uh, the raw materials in for initiating the manufacturing. And last question is that, uh, is there uh, any change to your uh, CapEx plans in the current year, looking at how the world has suddenly changed? Yes, we will be looking at it because cash flow is very important and uh, uh, we'll be, uh, again, deferring some of the CapEx, what we have planned in the second half. Uh, we really want to see, um, you know, how the first half works and uh, then take uh, the, I would say, you know, the B category CapEx into play. And what is your existing CapEx budget for the current financial year? See, normally that our CapEx is in the range of 100 crores maintenance and debottlenecking CapEx. And this year, you know, we're estimating to 50 to 60 crores only. Okay, okay, all right. Thank you, sir, and uh, all the best. Uh, and uh, I look forward to being in touch. Thanks. Thank you, Shwin. Thank you. Before we take the next question, I'd like to remind participants, if you wish to ask a question, please press star then 1 on your touchstone telephone. We take the next question from the line of Kunal from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Katun. So just a couple of questions. So you made one very interesting comment that uh, in the beginning that uh, you are seeing improving macros for the API industry, and uh, you know maybe maybe a bit of it is from the government help. And I think uh, so. Can you just talk a bit more about it? Are you sort of getting more uh, inquiries from new customers? Is it from developed markets or developing markets? What exactly is it?
So this is Bharat here. So let me address that uh, question. So uh, the answer is all of the above. So on some of the products, we see traction from new customers. Inquiries going up. Some of our existing customers also, uh, you know, have given us a more bullish view about their requirements for the coming uh, six months on. So uh, it's a mix of both. Uh, the other macro that we talked about in terms of uh, diversification of supply chain risk is happening across the industry. I mean, this is not just specific to Solara, and you know we've all been reading about it. Um, the the need for uh, all sectors, and particularly in the pharmaceutical industry, to diversify the supply chains, and we see that uh, in a couple of our uh, interactions with our customers, that this is now becoming uh, more of an urgent topic and something that they want to make tangible progress in in the coming uh, couple of quarters. So yes, we see the initial signs that these will uh, eventually end up being a big uh, beneficial macro development for uh, Solar. Okay, so if I understand correctly, you you are saying that you will see some tangible improvement, maybe very soon, and even in your numbers in FY21, correct? Yeah, so the discussions are preliminary with our customers in terms of, but we do see the trend in a very positive manner. Right, right. But then, I mean, if things are progressing so well, then why are you deferring your capex plans? Uh, I mean, so why are you being a bit cautious here then? I think it's just prudence at this stage, as Jitesh mentioned earlier. We are monitoring the situation as these discussions mature and we get into a, a, a more confident uh, situation with regards to how these will pan out during the course of the year. We will revisit um, you know, some of these decisions. As of now, we are being very prudent about how the year will shape. All right. right. Thanks. And my second question is just a housekeeping, bookkeeping one. Uh, your inventory has gone up a bit sharply you know, uh, year on year. Then even when revenues are down, so does it mean that some orders were probably delayed and we could see the revenue coming in one two FY twenty one? Yes, you are right, sir. The inventory in the last ten days we could not uh, complete the all the products are in work in progress status, and we could not convert it into finished product and complete the quality process. That's the reason that you know inventory is uh, a little high during the year end, and it will get normalized during the first quarter. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking my question. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants again, if you have a question, please press star then 1. Next question is from the line of Aditya Sinha from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Aditya Khemka here. Um, just a couple of questions for, for you gentlemen. Uh, firstly, if I look at the uh, your presentation, you have given a number on fixed asset turnovers, right? So fixed asset turn for uh, this year seems to be about 1.7 uh, earlier, which was 1.9 in the earlier year, and this 1.7 now is adjusted for your Vizag unit, so it's not that the Vizag unit is contributing to it. Um, so my question, therefore, to you is: given that some of our capacities might be slightly older, and therefore the book value of the assets may not be close to the replacement value. Do you think for the for you and for industry as a whole, the fixed asset turns will somewhat moderate from what the industry is currently reflecting because the newer capacities would be at a higher cost, whereas the uh, pl uh, end product price would largely be the same regardless of whether you manufacture it at new plant or the old plant? So the fixed asset value in our books is more or less revalued asset, which is, a, which is a, to the current level of during the merger, we revalued all the fixed assets to the realistic value, and mm -hmm. you know, with the we'll be in the range of uh, 1.9 will be the our target we are working towards for FI21. And that 1.9 you say including the Vizag unit? Some portion of uh, the Vizag unit, but not the full year uh, revenue of Vizag. Okay. Okay. Why why would that be? Because you are accounting for the marginal capacity position that Vizag would have. During the year, is that why? Yes, yeah, second off only that Jitesh has mentioned that in second quarter part of the year only that production will start in from Vizag. Right, so that's why you're taking this to portion off. Okay. Correct, yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, next question, you know, your yearly uh, concentration in customers and products seems to be 50 and 77. Top 10 customers are 50, top 10 products are 77. But in the quarter, your top 10 customers seem to be 63, which is significantly higher than the yearly average of top 10 customers being 50. So does that basically mean that some of your customers gave you, some of your larger customers gave you a pretty large order this quarter? 
because that's what the higher concentration would typically indicate in red. Yes, it's a. It's again, I would say it's a mix of two. One uh, is our uh, existing customers. Uh, the business continues to grow, which is good. And second is there's a marginal percentage also because of uh, uh, we did not ship out uh, the inventory during the last uh, uh, one week or ten days because of the lockdown. Right, uh, but that wouldn't increase the revenue from top ten customers for the quarter, right? It normalized. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I take that. Okay. Uh, nextly, uh, you know, if I look at your cash flow statement, there is an intercorporate deposit of 50 crores done during this year, and there is also a 55 crore investment in subsidiary. Uh, so, two questions here. Firstly, if you could elaborate on what the investment in subsidiary is, this the Visac plant which is in a subsidiary? Is that what the investment in subsidiary is? Old acquisition we did at Ambarnath unit uh, from Stites that is you know during last year that is what getting deflected and you know which has been the part of the amount that has been paid during the current financial first quarter current ah. financial year. Okay, okay, understood. And this intercorporate deposit of 50 crores, sir? It is that our cash deposited. With whom? With one of our group companies and you know uh, with the with the uh, with the with the current market rate interest, which is expected during uh, June. But why do this, sir? I mean, this could raise questions on the governance of the company. You could have deposited in the bank and your group company could have borrowed from the bank if they wanted to, right? Why Why follow this practice of intercorporate deposits? That is in line with our, uh, you know, uh, requirement we have done that, in line with the statutory requirement only we have done. No, no, I know statutory is allowed. It's, I'm not saying it's illegal. I'm saying from a perspective of uh, corporate governance, uh, intercorporate deposits between two entities, uh, you know, maybe, so because we don't know whom we have deposited to and what is the liquidity situation of the entity we have deposited with. That's right, all people. consideration has been given and properly decision has been taken by the board based on the what we have done. And, you know, it will. it is a part of the cash only we are taking. And uh, as Hari mentioned, uh, you know, this will come back in the books in June. Uh, so we take note of uh, your point. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make that point that uh, from a corporate governance perspective, leaves the bad taste in the mouth. That's all I'm saying. Uh, you know, you guys are large entities. You could do this with the banks, respectively, and, you know, avoid situations like this. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, last question on this, and I'll go back to, uh, you know, the cost side of things. So with the prices of crude coming down, could you give me some sense on, so I understand that the prices of solvents and excipients to an extent depends on crude, uh, and given the shock that crude prices have seen, um, have you seen a decline in the prices of solvents and excipients, number one? Number two, uh, if so, then are your customers asking you to pass on that cost benefit to them? And number three, uh, given the current uh, situation of supply constraints within API and China taking opportunistic price increases, how are you, how is your pricing discipline in the current environment? Now, uh, this is Jitesh here. Um, so the, from a pricing uh, policy, we've always maintained that Solara has never been opportunistic. We've always looked at long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. And the food uh, price, we don't buy excipients, but we do buy solvents. We have not seen um, any reduction in the raw material price as on today because of the crude going down and not many raw materials depend on uh, uh, the crude factor for us. Uh, well, uh, and um, the customers about asking for a price decrease because of the crude, we have not yet uh, got any request from the customers uh, uh, to lower the, the pricing. And again, as, you know, just going back to my statement, We've never been opportunistic. We've always looked at long-term relationships. Uh, and that's what has even um, uh, guided us and more business from our existing customers. So, uh, just, uh, one Sir, may I please three. request you to rejoin the queue for your follow-up? No problem at all. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Satish Vora from Mission Holding. Please go ahead. Sir, so you guided for... 10% revenue growth and 15% EBITDA growth. Which are the products which will contribute towards this over the next couple of years? 
Yes, sir. Uh, we did guide on uh, revenue growth of uh, 15% on CAGR and 20% on EBITDA. Uh, unfortunately, we don't give product by product uh, uh, revenue breakup. But it is uh, what I can say is it is a combination of our existing products as well as the, the new products, uh, which we have launched over the last two years, including uh, the new product filings, what we are doing, we see uh, revenue coming from the sale of the validation quantity. So these are the three aspects where the API is concerned. And the fourth is uh, the cramps. You know, we, we are seeing uh, traction in our cramps business. As we laid out, uh, you know, we have open bids over there with the customers. Uh, and again, because of COVID, there is some uh, delay in the decision, but we are, uh, there's a high probability that the cramps business also will contribute to our uh, revenue growth. So, CRAM business is a manufacturing business? Yes, it's a contract uh, development and uh, contract manufacturing. Yes. And you already have put up a plant for that or how is it being worked on? It's our existing plants. Uh, uh, keeping Vizac aside, we have uh, five manufacturing plants and uh, we already have some legacy CRAM business what we do from these sites. And if I want to consider overall utilization of all your plant, what level you are running at? Utilization of the plant last, uh, uh, we said we are, we are at about 70 to 80%. Including your Isaac plant? Oh, excluding. Excluding Isaac. Right? Excluding Isaac. Excluding Isaac. And Vizac can do what kind of turnover? As um, again, uh, gross block of 200 crore, right? Vizac is gross block to 200 crore, right? Yes, yes. You can what possibly, kind of turnover it can be there? The best way what to look at it is that asset, asset turnover. turnover. What kind so of we, asset turnover? So we've mentioned around 1.7 times largely we try to kind of achieve 1.7 to 1.9. We should be pretty much in that range. Yeah, that is uh, depending on once we get the, uh, it will be based on the full year and once we have regulatory appro approvals from all the authorities. Exactly. At peak. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Sarvanam Vishwanathan from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, um, can you? Uh, can you take us through the debt reduction plans because you have mentioned that uh, there won't be a major capex this year. So are you planning to reduce debt in this year? So this, uh, we'll be availing the debt for the uh, new facility for the Vizac, for construction of the additional facility in Vizac. For the debt we'll be availing and we'll be repaying nearly 120 crores debt repayment during the next financial year. More or less, the debt level will be the same range. Okay, in FI21. Yes. Okay. And, uh, uh, I mean, this is a topical uh, news. So, our uh, Vizac facility, uh, is it away from the uh, gas leak area in Vizac? It's an unfortunate incident that has happened today. Yeah, it's around 40 kilometers away from this uh, uh, our facility. The other point I wanted to have clarity with uh, Anna uh, would we be able to use that capacity for other markets or is it only marked for US markets? Yes, we are looking at that facility for uh, other products. Uh, so that work is already in uh, progress. And the existing inventory, can it be sold in other markets? Yes, it can, but we also need to be, uh, you know, responsible in terms of uh, how we do it because we don't want to sell something and then get a recall. So we want to be cautiously uh, uh, going that path because there are other markets where uh, ranitidine is still not suspended or banned. Yeah, th that's why I wanted to understand. <coughs> you would uh, try to seek some regulatory approvals and then do it? Yes, and also the customer confirmation because... Uh, we don't want, as I again, as I'm repeating again, that I, we don't want a situation where we send the material and then it is uh, as a recall and uh, that tarnishes our image. So we want to be cautious about that. Even for the uh, for, for India, uh, for any market, 
for any market. Because we don't distinguish market uh, based on uh, you know the quality requirements. We have one quality policy across all our sites for all markets, including India. Okay, understand. Okay, thank you. I'll join back the queue. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rajat Satya from Vidhi Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Just one question. Uh, our gross margin is expanded by around five and a half percent in this year. Uh, just wanted to check how much of that is sustainable. So, our gross margin, uh, as we as we guided, we always looking at to be at a minimum of fifty percent to. Uh, well, in this quarter is uh, beyond that, but it would not be less than fifty percent. Um, and it's also a mix of uh, various things because there are certain times, uh, certain quarters there are campaign-based products which uh, have a higher gross margin, and then the new product uh, validations, sales, uh, those also are at much higher margins compared to the commercial products. So, uh, I mean, now you believe that uh, the product mix and the scale has been reached that you know we can maintain fifty percent margins at at all times. And yes. Okay. Understood. And one more small question: What is the share of cramps uh, in our overall business right now? What's the output? So cramps uh, is uh, today it is uh, less than 10% of our uh, uh, overall revenues. But yes, this is a significant uh, pillar which we want to build. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons also for raising equity through the promoters as well as through TPG is uh, to look at uh, inorganic uh, acquisition and cramps which can. Uh, faster the process of uh, growing this uh, uh, pillar of business. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Viraj Mehta from Equus PMS. Please go ahead. Oh, my questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Jay Sorry from JMT Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, my question is uh, for Mr. Hari. This uh, till what period uh, this uh, tax provision, uh, you know, would get adjusted by deferred tax? And next two years are minimum. Uh, next two years minimum. Yes, sir. Okay, and and thereafter we should be falling uh, within normal tax, 25 percent. With a with a normal tax, sir, because we also got that uh, Vizag is AC is the unit. Yeah. And you know that tax holiday will continue, and yeah. other units will come under the normal tax, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Parikh, you can answer question. Yeah, yeah, Mike, my, 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 mm -hmm. it's it's replied. Thank you so much. You please go. Thank ahead. you. Next question is from the line of Sachin Kusera from Van Investment. Please go ahead. I had two questions from my side. One was the sanitary in provision. So, if you could just help us know whether it is reflected in the raw material cost or it is something that is reflected in the lower revenue. At least that would help us get some sense on the cross margins adjusted for the provision. The whatever the inventory what we are carrying has been already written off and it is adjusted in the gross margin. The gross margin. Okay. Uh, second was this uh, net debt figure of 600 crores. Now you mentioned that this year you are looking at not more than 60 crores of capex, and we are looking at a 15-20% growth in EBITDA. So are we looking at reduction in the net debt? The 600 crores should come down, and plus we also I think have some warrant which are still pending conversion, right? So how are we looking at the net debt figure uh, next year? We expect 280 crores warrant uh, infusion fund during uh, current year. Mm -hmm. And we are expected to repay around 120 crores debt during the current year. And we'll be availing, uh, the, for the Vizac expansion, we'll be having uh, 100 crores uh, loan. Mm -hmm. So in net debt, there will be reduction in the, uh, after adjusting the, uh, you could defund, there'll be reduction in the debt only compared to the current year. Okay. Uh, second thing is in terms of the pipeline that we have, 
uh, what is the number of launches we are looking and are we looking at incremental launchings being uh, much better gross margin so uh, the gross margins could tend to go up next uh, one to two years can you please comment on that yeah, based on the dmf filings what we have done over the last couple of years now uh, we do expect uh, some uh, new launches also to uh, happen in fy21 uh, while the gross margins uh, of course for these new products uh, are better than uh, the commercial ones uh, it will not have a, a big significant impact on the gross margin because uh, while the value is high the volumes uh, would be in low to mid volume okay just last one question regarding return on capital we have almost uh, close to doubled it in the last two years uh, so how do we see this number in the next couple of years because uh, you mentioned that the gross margin may not see a significant improvement so is it just purely by operating leverage we will see improvement and what do you think is a sustainable return on capital for the type of business that we are doing it will be around eighteen uh, percent, sir. Eighteen percent. Thank you. Thank you. We take the last question from the line of Vibharavi from Crip Intelligence. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, so I have just two questions. One is with respect to Ranitidine. So is that a story that is uh, over? You know, because FDA at that time when the ban was imposed, they had said you know that there could be some Workarounds uh, in terms of you know uh, the presence of ND NDMA, the, it could be a fixable problem. So, do you see it as a fixable problem, and do your customers see it as a fixable problem, or uh, it's like uh, now this a story that is over in all respects, even with, whether with respect to EU or India? So, to answer on Ranitidin, so the US FDA has suspended, they have not banned the product, right? They have asked uh, the finished dosage manufacturers to conduct more study. So we cannot completely write off uh, on uh, Ranitidin. Uh, uh, the FDA has, of course, given some guidelines, and if those guidelines are met, uh, the, the customers can relaunch the product. So while that could be a, a very positive news uh, uh, for players who operate in Ranitidin, API, and finished dosage, but at Solara, we are already uh, working to de-risk uh, in, in uh, a future scenario presence that we'll not be able to launch the API. So we're already working on the de-risk plan. Yeah, so I just wanted to know what the, what do you mean by the de-risk uh, plan? Are you, you One of the things you said that was that you're looking at using the facilities for other products. So uh, could you give some more you know additional details on that or that you will try to rework uh, the product itself and it's again? Are you moving out completely or you'll try to, uh, you know? No, it's not about moving out completely, right? When I talk about the DRIS, there are some uh, APIs which we have where the demand is uh, beyond our capacity and we are looking at can we qualify uh, this uh, block for uh, for the products where we have already having uh, higher demand. That's one. Second is we are also looking at what are the new products we can file from uh, this facility. Third is this facility is also available for our uh, contract manufacturing business. So these are the three uh, ways what we are working in terms of uh, how we utilize the capacity of Ranitidine. Okay, so which are the other products that you know you're currently looking at that can be produced from this facility? Yeah, yeah. unfortunately we don't give product details, uh, so I will not be able to answer that. Okay. Uh, second is that you know you also spoke about uh, opportunities in terms of uh, diversification of supply chain that you're seeing, uh, and that's an industry-wide uh, trend as you say. So where are the op opportunities in this case? You know, which are the new molecules, or where do you see your customers asking for more uh, product areas? Which um, product? So let me try and answer that. This is Bharat here. So uh, on two elements of the business, right? On cramps, for sure, that this will lead to some positive discussions with the customer when it comes to diversification of supply chain. So that is very dependent on the customer. Each customer has a different requirement on the product, and we will work with them accordingly. On the overall APIs, it's a bit too early to pinpoint to specific products. Uh, the general discussions, as I said earlier, are happening now at a very early stage with our customers about you know some of the critical uh, you know end products and we are looking at you know working with them on a few apis it's difficult for me to pinpoint specific products where i see this uh, but uh, what we can say is that these discussions are progressing with our customers 
Okay. Okay. So just to clarify one last time, that is you're not completely moving out of vanadidine, though you are looking at other products to kind of uh, supplement or uh, uh, replace the income that was coming from this block from vanadidine, but you're not completely moving out of it. Yeah, we continue to support our customers for them to uh, ensure that you know they are able to relaunch the product meeting all the regulatory requirements. Okay, so there is a possibility of a relaunch still. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management to get your open comments. Over to you all. So we thank you again for participating in our uh, earnings call and uh, thank you for all those questions. Um, and we look forward to speaking to you uh, in the next quarter. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Solara Active Family Sciences Limited, this concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us. You may now disconnect the last.